Hey guys, it's Michael here today. I have a little video I want to put out for you guys. It's mainly about um, building a bandsaw mill. All tips and tricks and advice I've learned over the last few years of uh, building the mill and improving the mill along the way. So there's about 10 things I want to let you guys know about I kind of had to learn along the ways and I think it'll help anyone out that might be thinking about building a bandsaw mill. So stick around and check out the video. So number one here, um, my advice would be don't overcomplicate the build when you first start on it. Just keep it as simple as possible. Don't uh, don't overthink it. Just make it simple. You can always add improvements like power feeds and different things like that along the way once you get it up and running. But right off the bat, just keep it very simple. Just get the project done so you can start milling. And then from there you can live with it and see what else you might want to add to the mill. So that's tip number one. Okay, number two would be salvage as much material as you possibly can. Of course, you're building it by scratch. You're probably trying to save some money like I was on this mill. This one cost me about 350 bucks to build. Of course, since then I've added a power feed and some other, you know, accessories that have brought up the price a bit. But to get the basic mill is about 350 bucks. One thing when you're working with uh, salvage material, you can't be on a short timeline. You can't expect to get everything you need to and build in a month. It's going to take longer than that just because, um, well, you're salvaging everything. Stuff is just, you know, found for free or extremely cheap. Um, no matter what, there's going to be some things you're going to have to probably buy, like components like pulleys and things like that to get your proper uh, belt drive gear ratios right, stuff like that. So pretty much plan on salvaging as much as you can and just don't be in a rush. That's tip number two. So, hey buddy, come on. So tip number three, uh, let your friends know that you're building a mill. Let them kind of know what kind of components you're looking for, whether it be wheels or a motor or metal, things like that, pallet racking. Whatever you're looking for, let them know because instead of you just being out there searching, your friends can be keeping an eye out for certain materials too. I got this motor. It's a 12-horse motor I got from a neighbor. When I told him I was thinking about building a mill, he said he had one in his garage. He got for free from somewhere else. And it was pretty rusty because it was used as a pump on a fishing boat, but I cleaned it up and it runs great. And uh, it's one of those things, I've milled them a bunch of wood since then as a thank you. And uh, things that come around go around. So it's like, have your friends keep an eye out for you if they can help you out. Maybe help them out in return with some wood later on. So let your friends know what you're looking for. So number four I would have to say is uh, work with materials that are pretty much halfway to the goal you're trying to achieve. Like these, uh, I repurposed some um, pipe clamps and I turned them into log lockdowns, hold downs. I took a uh, pallet racking and used it into track. This is pretty much half the track was done. I welded some angle iron on there and I also used pallet racking crossbars for the log bunks. It was material I got for free from my work. They were getting rid of some stuff. and uh, So keep an eye out. You can get material for cheap or free and you can repurpose things like that and make it a lot easier on you so you only have to modify something to use it for your purpose rather than building it from scratch. Let's say number five would have to be when you're building this, it's kind of, kind of a lot to take on. And I would say work in kind of like building components or steps along the way. Like you can kind of come up with the idea and build your log clamps and your hold downs. Work of those as a step or a component. Work on the track as one component. Maybe make your blade guides as another component as you're working. You can focus on smaller parts of the mill along the way. It makes it easier rather than being overwhelmed by a lot to take on. You work on one component at a time and put it all together as a finished product. So that's how I approached it and it really worked for me. So give it a try. So I think number six would be no matter what size motor you run on your mill, you need to make sure to get the gear ratio right or pretty close. Uh, I see a lot of videos of people building mills online and uh, they have the gear ratio, the blade spinning way too fast. And uh, as soon as they go into their cut, their motor bogs down, they got to stop, they got to start and stop and start. It would be kind of like climbing a hill, a steep hill in fifth gear in your car. It's going to bog down, it's not going to do very well. Um, you'd be a lot better off climbing the hill in fourth where it'll pull a lot easier. So no matter big or small motor, you definitely got to get the gear ratio right on that. and. Um, it will definitely make your mill cut a lot better. You'll be a lot happier with it. Be cutting to the full capacity of the motor can. And uh, so 
that's definitely one of the things I would spend a bit of time figuring out the gear ratio on my mill. That's why I had to do a jack shaft. I didn't really want to do that. I want to do a direct drive right down here, but I have 26 inch wheels and it just wasn't going to work out right with the pulleys. So I had to do a jack shaft to get the gear ratio down. And I'm glad I didn't cut that corner. I did that and it really worked well for the gear ratio. There's a site I found a lot of information on, uh, Cook's Sawmill site, and I can put a link in the description on the video. You, I would recommend checking that out because there's a lot of good information on getting your gear ratios, diameter of pulleys, diameter of wheels, blade speed, stuff like that. So I'd recommend checking that site out as well. So number seven would have to be, uh, be realistic about the logs you're planning to cut on them. I scaled my saw for pretty much the size of logs I have on my property. And between the guides are 26 inches, and you can fit a pretty good sized tree in there. That's a cant, it'll cut up to 26 inches. You can sometimes fudge it and get a bigger log in there and roll it around and you can cut a little bit bigger than that. But that's pretty much it. It takes a lot of power to cut through 26 inches of wood. Um, I will see some people that build mills and they'll put a really, really wide uh, capacity, maybe three feet. That's massive. I mean, I've never, I don't have trees that are three feet on my property. If I did, I'd probably leave them up in the first place. Um, and then sometimes they'll pair it with a really small motor. It takes a lot of horsepower to pull a blade through a three feet of wood. So be realistic about what you're planning to do. Don't build it to a giant capacity because someday you may have a friend that brings over something for a table. Just be realistic about what you want to do. And another thing is the size of logs I have on my property and what my mill can mill is about all I want to handle. Unless you have a really big tractor or excavator, it's uh, kind of realistic for me to move. Anything much bigger than that gets pretty heavy. I also built a small log arch and um, I scaled it to what I can move to my mill. There's no reason to build a log arch that can handle an enormous tree if I can't mill it. So I kind of scaled everything to fit that with the mill. So uh, just be realistic about what you're planning to do with the mill and build it in those kind of means. If you have trees that are 24 or 26 inch diameter around your property, build it to that. So that's tip number seven. Okay, tip number eight. Um, again, kind of being realistic about things. Like if you have only a certain amount of track, just go for it. It's like you don't have to mill a 26 foot beam unless you really need a 26 foot beam. But um, this one here, I had some extra track. I haven't extended it yet. Someday I might, but in two and a half years, I haven't needed it. Um, I can mill about a 13 foot long beam on this thing. And uh, realistically, I mill some 12 foot stuff, but I commonly mill a lot more 10 and a lot of eights. So, um, and I made these bunks so I can mill as short as a four footer. So you have some range there. So uh, realistically, just kind of, again, kind of comes back to the beginning of uh, this video is don't overcomplicate your build. If you got enough material to do a 12 foot bed so you can mill 12 foot logs, you know, go for it. You can always extend the track later on. So keep it simple. All right, we're on number nine now. Um, number nine is the one that I kind of questioned a bit and I know other people have questioned it too. And that is, uh, how do I know what length blade I'm going to need for my mill? How am I going to figure that out. And there's two kind of approaches that I see. And the first one is the one I took. And that was I got my motorcycle wheels, the 26 inch diameter, and I tried to get a 26 inch capacity between the bearing guides. So I laid them out just right on my shop floor and brought them out far enough so I could get the 26 inch capacity and kind of estimated, did a little ballpark and figure out what blade I need and made that fit kind of with what uh, pallet racking size I was working with. So give or take a few inches on your capacity with that. So the mill fit everything well, really well with the pallet racking and the wheel size and everything. And then uh, from there I welded up my mill along the way and I just took a tape measure and stretched it around the wheels as tight as I could and made sure I had some adjustment that I could always tension the blade a little more. And I got my measurement, I think it was a hundred and see 172 and a half inches is what I ended up with and uh, place, places that actually manufacture and cut bandsaw blades so it should be able to cut you to any length you need um, if you just give them the measurements and uh, so that's what I ended up doing and uh, number two would be if you kind of get an idea what capacity you want your mill to be at and what diameter wheels you have if you look on name brand mills and you're running similar wheel sizes as them and capacity you could always probably buy a blade for a specific mill and model and use that as a template blade when you're marking everything up and laying it up and work around that. But for me, it seemed like that was more restricting than to actually 
build the mill what worked best with my pallet racking, my frame, my wheels, and just get a blade cut for it. So those are two approaches to it. So I hope those help out. So number 10, uh, I would have to say number 10 is one of those things that can get overlooked, but it's probably one of the most important things. It's safety guards. Yes, safety guards. Okay, so um, I know once you get your mill built, you get a blade on it and you can throttle it up and the blade spins up to full speed. You're going to be excited to roll a log on there and start cutting away. Um, of course, I did that once too, but I used a damn 2x4 to push the mill. I didn't want to get near that thing with the blade spinning in case something went wrong. Anyways, I would recommend when you're still in your shop or wherever you're building it and you get your mill up and it's going to kind of run, just take the time, build them out of plywood, build them out of plastic, build them out of metal, whatever you want to do, just put them on there. It's well worth it. No, uh, you don't want to risk your life or limb, just not worth it to cut some lumber. So just take the time. I know it's tough because you want to go out and try the thing out, but um, it's well worth it. And if you don't put them on when you're in the shop, you'll end up not getting them on for a long time. You'll just start getting comfortable running the mill without them. And I have not had a band break on this thing yet, but at my work we have a 30 horsepower electric uh, big baker resaw. And I'll be back there working on machines back in the core shop and all of a sudden you'll hear BAM! Dust will go flying and a blade will break. Um, it's definitely loud. It's something you don't want to have happen around you and you don't want flying out anywhere. Usually they just break and they expand out into the guard and they stay there. If you don't have a guard on this thing, it's going to go flying. So safety guards. And uh, stick around. I have a few more things, words to wrap up this video and we'll cover that next. 11, and most of the amps go up to 10. Well, if you guys are familiar with Spinal Tap, I guess this one goes to 11. These go to 11. So, um, I would have to say, the final words on this is, I'm really happy I stuck it through with this build. There's a few spots where it got complicated and you had to figure out some problems. It's always a solution to every problem, so just stick with it. But, I started off with this mill. I wanted a mill. I've always wanted one. Never thought I had enough money and it just was going to be hard to put money aside to get a mill. Um, I never even used a mill before I built this one. It was the first cut on it was the first mill I've ever operated. Uh, it seemed kind of funny to build something and so sure about it, but you know what? You wing it and figure it out and I've been figuring out how to mill really well with it. It's fun. I have to say it's quite um, satisfying something about taking a log and milling into lumber from your property. And as loud as a mill is, it's surprisingly relaxing too when you're running it. Something about it, I don't know. It's uh, nice. You cut a board and you see a nice new grain that you've never seen before. Um, so if you have the capability to fabricate and weld and do stuff like that and you want to take it on, I'd really, really recommend it. It's a lot of fun. Now, if you really want to mill, you don't think you got money, and you're not sure if you can really weld or fabricate something to this extent, I would say if you have trees in your property and you are interested in milling, something that's been crossed your mind a lot of times, I would say just start putting a little money per paycheck aside. Even if it takes you a year or two to get it, you're not going to regret it. But keep in mind, they're valuable. If you build it or you get it, even after saving up for a few years, and you decide you really don't like it, you can sell it. But there's a great, great chance that you're going to keep it and you're going to be happy about it. Maybe you'll make a little money on the side with it as well. But biggest thing is get it, even if it takes you a few years to save up, just a little bit of money here and there. It's well worth it. I think you'll be really happy in the long run. So um, till next time, be safe milling. Take care. Bye.